Hello and welcome to The Pulse. Last Saturday, police arrested two people, an Indian engineer and his girlfriend, for giving the authorities misleading and insufficient information about their contact history to health authorities after the Centre for Health Protection managed to trace the couple's movements. They've both been charged with offences under the Prevention and Control of Disease Regulation. Interest in this case is high because the man who was charged entered Hong Kong from Dubai in March. He's the first person in Hong Kong to be confirmed as having the N501Y variant of the COVID-19 virus. His girlfriend contracted the same variant. Fears of the spread of this variant by their contacts led to more than 2,000 people being placed in quarantine. Well, with us to talk about the mutant virus strains and the government's quarantine arrangements, Sir Gilman Su of the Department of Health Technology and Information at the Hong Kong Polytechnic University, and Paul Zimmerman, District Council of Southern District, representing the Pok Fulam constituency, which has had a lot of constituents being sent off to Penny's Bay. Can I ask you, first of all, um, Gilman Su, um, you've been doing some very interesting work on this mutant strain. In layman's term, can you explain what that is? Well, mutants means um, the virus uh, undergoes some uh, mutations. So some mutation will make the virus uh, more transmissible and then uh, very likely to uh, reduce the efficacy of the vaccine. And how worried should people be about this? There's a lot of alarmist talk yeah. about these mutant strains. I think the concern is about the transmissibilities of um, the virus. You know, uh, we have, I mean, we all suffer in the, the fourth wave of outbreak in, in the community. So that lineage is not what we call the mutant lineage. It's an ordinary lineage. So even so, actually, we got 1,000 cases in the community. So while we're trying to, I mean, having a peaceful moment, I mean, uh, since April, then we have another, I mean, introduction of uh, the new variants, which is actually the variant of concern. So known to be have, uh, I mean, higher transmissibility introduced into our, uh, our city. Because they have higher transmissibility, yeah. anybody can pronounce that, yeah. <laughs> um, does it also mean that, that they're more virulent forms of COVID? Uh, not really, because actually, uh, according to some animal experiment, if the animal infected with uh, the UK variant, the South African variants, and also uh, the ordinary lineage, we didn't see actually the animal is more sick. Right. We don't. We don't. I mean, have a very significant. I mean, data on that. But what we worry is, is uh, number one is more transmissible, and also uh, it, another, another. What the scientist is known is, it's very likely to escape from uh, the virus for the virus to escape from the immunity uh, by the vaccinations. So let's just talk about these vaccinations. Um, I, I know there's conflicting evidence here, but as far as you know, how effective are the two vaccines that are available in Hong Kong, BioNTech and Sinovac, in, in addressing those, those mutant strains? But the, the um, data from the BioNTech actually is uh, more reliable, and then we have more data on that one. That vaccine, I mean, almost 100 percent. I mean, efficacy. I mean, to the ordinary lineage. But for the new variants, talking about the South Africa, the Brazilian uh, lineage, the efficacy will reduce to uh, about seven to 75 percent to 50 percent. This is for BioNTech. Yes. And what do we know about Sinovac? No much data about uh, uh, Sinovac on uh, the new variants. Actually, still not available at this moment. Paul Zimmerman, can I ask you, I mean, what the government has been saying is one of the reasons why these risks are so low is it's running an extremely effective quarantine regime. But the consequences of that regime, and I know that in your constituency, uh, among others, incidentally, there have, you know, whole blocks of people have been transported to the Gulag Penny's Bay and have been complaining about the um, conditions there. I mean, you, you could argue that their complaints are trivial in the face of the overwhelming need to combat the virus. I, I guess there's a cost-benefit analysis that needs to be done, whether people can stay and quarantine in their building mm -hmm. at home, so quarantine in place or quarantine 
elsewhere. So we've had quite a number of cases uh, of COVID in, uh, in Port Fulham, and then normally it's only the close contacts that we're quarantined. Uh, and then, but now suddenly we have a whole building that goes uh, goes uh, to uh, to quarantine. Uh, that seems to be quite onerous on the residents, um, especially in a building like Royalton. That was in, in this particular case with very sophisticated residents. Quite uh, quite many were involved at uh, the Queen Mary Hospital or at Hong Kong U. They're involved with uh, the medicine. Um, and they, they know what's going on in the building. They know whether their building is at risk or not, or whether there's, there's a high risk for transmission. They know the, the, the people who are involved, they know the family that's involved, and they can assess their situation quite well, that the, basically the risk that there was a transmission was very, very, very low. And they were basically asking, so can we quarantine in place? And so I, th I think what we see here is that there is a need for some better classification of uh, buildings so that when a situation like this arises, do you then quarantine the entire building or do you allow a building to quarantine in place? What, what got to be the design of the building? What got to be the management of the building for government to feel comfortable to let people quarantine in place? I'm sure you've been hearing this in volume. Reports of what goes on inside, particularly the Penny's Bay, the biggest of the quarantine centres. Yeah, I mean, of course, all my residents have been complaining loudly and uh, calling me up and giving me reports of what goes on with the food and uh, the, the fact that they had to keep all the windows closed, that they couldn't even go for a bit of exercise outside. And especially the first day when people arrive, it's an, it's an incredible shock uh, because you mm. just feel that you're stuck in a prison cell um, and you know you're not going to get out for three, uh, three weeks and, uh, and you get, you know, just, you're not prepared for this. Um, uh, then you have to deal, still deal with a lot of situations that you may have left behind at home, whether it's the pet that you couldn't find a friend for or family members that you're supposed to look after. And so people are in, in a very dire uh, strait um, when, on that first day. And so people were uh, very sad about what happened, and especially knowing that their building is entirely suitable for quarantining in place. If that's what has to happen. Yes. I mean, I, 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 I wonder if I could ask you, what is actually the medical justification for this? I mean, is it really necessary to, to put people who simply live in the same building as an infected person, the entire population of that building, into a centre? Yeah, I, I think um, why the government did, didn't consider the quarantine in place is one of the uh, reasons is uh, during the fourth wave. So you can see there is uh, vertical transmissions. I mean, in particular, vertical, in vertical yeah. transmission in, in the same building. Yeah, building yeah. Yeah. So, uh, in particular, in uh, the Yamade uh, district. So, we can see a couple of um, apartments who is actually facing the same directions. So, the residents uh, inside is to get infected, I mean, uh, consecutively. So, um, this is apparently through the drainage. Yes. Right. Yeah. yeah. So, so, so we learned this in SARS. Yeah. I mean, we, we, we had the similar kind of situation. So, so, the question is then, are we now ready? to actually classify buildings by what right. is the installed drainage system, you know, what are the risk mm -hmm. factors, when is there a risk for a transmission within the building and when is that, when there's that very little, and then and that, that decision needs to be made, the capacity needs to be built in government to make that decision, yeah. but be very clear to residents, if your building is XYZ, yeah. you can quarantine place, if it doesn't comply with those standards, you'll got to, exactly. and people can prepare for that. Yeah. And then there's another related issue. I mean, people are being put into quarantine who've been vaccinated. Mm -hmm. I thought, perhaps naively, mm -hmm. that if you've received a vaccination, you, you, you can't also transmit the virus. Well, um, the, the, I mean, the original purpose of the vaccination is um, trying to reduce the severity of the disease, I mean, in case you get infected. Mm -hmm. And then later on, I mean, the scientists find that uh, there's one more bonus point is that the the viral load, I mean, when, when you get vaccinated and uh, unfortunately you also get infected, the viral, lo viral load, I mean, the numbers of virus inside your body is very low, meaning that uh, the chance that you can transmit or to infect other people is lower. So you're right. So when you get vaccinated, you get less chance to infect the other people. I, I'm just wondering, I mean, this is a much more general question, but are you, are you getting anecdotal evidence from people you talk to in Park Fulham or indeed elsewhere? of a, an increasing worry about the type of vaccine as opposed to the even more pressing question of whether people are going to be vaccinated at all because it's so low in Hong Kong, that percentage. I think the only concern people have is 
why are people not getting vaccinated? Mm. Uh, you know, there's got to be an incentive to get vaccinated so we can all take our masks off. Uh, you know, if you look at the, the numbers right now, and I, I, I printed out this chart, and uh, basically we're almost at zero in terms of kind of like any spread of the virus in Hong Kong. And we're still walking around and we're still behaving like we've got a massive epidemic in Hong Kong, which is just not the case. But I think the government then got to be much clearer about, so what's, the, what's then the benefit? Uh, I'm double-dosed vaccinated more than two weeks ago. Can I now travel without quarantine periods when I come back? I, I think government has to move on and start putting these benefits really clearly on the table for people that are vaccinated so the people that are not vaccinated will go and get vaccinated and we can all move on with our lives. And I think the government is at this moment very reluctant and I think that reluctance is, and, and reluctance from the community is really government's reluctance in providing good benefits for those who are vaccinated. I mean, what Paul seems to be saying is that, 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 that it's more push than pull. In other words, give people incentives mm. to be mm. vaccinated mm. rather than perhaps scare them about the consequences of not being vaccinated. I mean, what, what do you think works here? I think that makes sense because that is the purpose of the vaccinations. Vaccinations means we're trying to eradicate the virus and then get, I mean, the life back to normal. And nowadays we have some very rapid tests, like for example, the antigen test. You can, well, I mean, test it by yourself, self-test. So, well, if this virus... These are simple sal saliva tests, aren't they? Yeah, very mm. simple. But so it takes two hours, you said, no, so... No, not that one. Not the two hours is a nucleotide test. Uh -huh. The antigen test is actually is kind of the rapid test, just like a pregnancy test. So you get a, a swap... An and immediate result, more or less. Five minutes. So you could do the airport for everybody going in and out? Yes, yeah. Hmm. I understand that sensitivity may not be that high, but for those who are low risk, uh, who have very low risk, uh, in, in particular for those who got vaccinated, we can consider in this method. Hmm. Well, let's see if that's going to happen. <laughs> Thank you both very much indeed. Uh, we'll be back after the break. We'll see you then. Welcome back. March 21st was the International Day for the Elimination of Racial Discrimination. This year, the Equal Opportunities Commission and Caritas held an online forum looking beyond the pandemic to talk about racial equality, inclusion and the impact of COVID-19 on Hong Kong's ethnic minorities. Those taking part in the seminar said there's still a lot to be done to bridge racial divides in Hong Kong. Fears over the spread of COVID-19 among domestic helpers and the government's initial insistence on mandatory tests and vaccination for foreign domestic helpers have led to accusations of racial discrimination. Yes, 之後太多修正,所以說真的,這些就沒有得逼,因為真的你打完之後有反應,大家來試,僱主什麼都要包的嘛。My employer asked me to have vaccine. I have no problem, so I just go to vaccination for, for my safety also. What the chief executive or other uh, high-ranking government staff who is saying that migrant workers just always gathering in the park and they have a big chance as the uh, virus uh, spreader. The message towards local people make them more panic. So uh, I think the government need to do something rather than make a negative uh, comment and then leading the other people to you know, create a division between local and migrant. On 29th April, a domestic helper working in Tung Chung was found after testing to be carrying the potentially more transmissible N501Y variant of the COVID-19 virus. Her case was later linked to those of at least two other COVID-positive domestic helpers. The following day, the Secretary for Labour and Welfare, Lord Chi Kuang, introduced a first round of compulsory COVID-19 screening for foreign domestic workers. The 380,000 employees had nine days to get tested. Law also raised the idea of requiring mandatory vaccination of all foreign domestic workers applying for employment visas. 
，作為一個工作簽證嘅條件咧，我哋覺得呢個唔係特別一個嘅 o r d e 咁亦都係當然佢可以選擇，即係唔喺香港做嘢，因為佢都並非一個香港嘅居民。咁所以，我哋覺得咧，去考慮到我哋嗰個整體防疫嘅要求咧，呢個係有需要。There were、uh, some、uh, mingling of the different、uh, foreign domestic helpers、uh, together. So therefore, I think uh, this uh, gathering or uh, gathering together or contacts、um, uh, are high risk to a certain extent. The proposal to vaccinate all migrant domestic workers was short-lived. Not only did it quickly draw criticism from diplomats from the workers' countries, it also left them feeling targeted and discriminated against. In the following week, the chief executive suggested the proposed policy might be reviewed. She officially withdrew the proposal this Tuesday. 誒，勞工及福利局局長亦都係誒會見咗印尼同菲律賓嘅總領事咧，係徵求佢哋嘅睇法。我哋亦都係考慮咗近日誒僱主同埋僱員嘅反應啦，社會嘅意見，所以政府係決定不會啊，不會推行呢個要求外佣喺誒誒簽證申請裏邊咧，係需要強制接受呢個疫苗嘅接種嘅規定。May 9th was the final day for domestic helpers to get their COVID-19 tests in the first round of compulsory screening. Around 20 people were lining up at the Meifu Testing Centre before it opened for the day. Some visited vaccination centres on their rest day to talk to others who had already had two doses of vaccine. String Actin, spokesperson of the Asian Migrant Coordinating Body. Saw for herself how long it took for migrant domestic workers to get tested in Victoria Park in the first week of May. She says that they are often unfairly targeted, and that this is particularly evident given that the government has ordered a second round of compulsory tests for the same group between 15th and 30th May. In her opinion, it's not helped by the fact that they have too few channels to report poor treatments in their workplace or their experiences of discrimination. So the employer already saying that、uh, you need to join vaccine, and if the worker said, "Oh, but there is no regulation yet," and then the worker, the employer keep reminding, "So you need to join vaccine. When you join the vaccine, I can help you to booking the, you know, the vaccine." Or the employer was saying that. If you want to have rest day, you need to have vaccine. So this is some of the unseen regulation under of the employer house that we cannot make complaint. If you know, if the employer forced me to have vaccine, where's I need to complain? Labor department, no. Labor department just talking about rest day and wages, not including this kind of yeah issue. Yeah. In a written response to the polls. The Labour Department said that in the past 16 months, it had received 1,050 employment claims filed by either employers or employees. Of those cases, around 75% were settled through conciliation. The department added that it will continue to offer advice and assistance to workers who have doubts concerning their employment rights and benefits. To keep both their families and their helpers safe from COVID-19, many employers do try to keep them up to date with news related to the pandemic. Lisa is happy that her helper, who takes care of her mother, decided to take the vaccine. Because I sent her first, and I said, "Hey, I don't have anything. Don't be scared. If you get sick, you can get sick." 嗯，同埋因為佢媽媽都打咗，佢妹又打咗，所以佢
，即係亦都冇咁擔心咯。依啲就冇得逼，即因為真係你打完之後有反應咧。大家嚟試，僱主咩都要包噶嘛，即係我哋叫做生養死葬。咁到有事嘅時候，佢又慘時，你又慘，係咪先？我哋依一班，就算係護老者好，誒外援僱主呢啲羣組都好，都都冇話、呃、真係可以 push 到個工人打針咯。只係喺度信話，唉、哎，佢唔打針真係慘，官官你都冇辦法。The Pulse spoke to some domestic workers who completed their first round of COVID tests on a weekday. While many do accept the need for testing, they don't all feel the same about the vaccination, even if not having it reduces the chances of employment. I spent almost 15 years here without my family, so I think I don't really... I'm, 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 I'm so sad to tell that I really need to give up my work because I really don't want to do the vaccination. Because I have a problem with my blood, my hemoglobin is so, so slow, and every time I feel dizzy for that just because of that. So it's not really safe for me to do the vaccination. Several migrant workers' groups met in Victoria Park last Sunday to draw attention to the stigmatization and discrimination faced by foreign domestic helpers. String and other volunteers are encouraging fellow workers to reduce the chance of unfair treatments for domestic helpers by reporting any cases of discrimination. I think the government needs to learn from the migrant community how to help each other to fight COVID-19. It's not discriminate it as each other, but encourage everyone to doing something, you know, to protect each other, to give something that you know is really can save us from the impact of the COVID-19. So I think the government should run. <laughs> yeah.